It would be remiss of me to ignore the amped up warmth in Olive Sprig. More talk on green paint colors. Actually, we're going to be discussing some of the 2022 colors of the year. So yes, more talk on green paint colors. Now, some of you may know a lot of paint companies picked green as their upcoming colors of the year. But of those that were selected, what are some of my personal favorites? Well, a big thank you to one of our subscribers, Patrick, for recommending I compare some of them. But instead of pairing off Evergreen Fog and Olive Sprig, I'm also adding October Mist, Guacamole, and Breezeway in the battle of the next big green color. Hit that like button if you like overly dramatic videos about paint. So we've talked about all of these colors before as they were announced to the general public by each respective company. You have Sherwin-Williams Evergreen Fog, Benjamin Moore's October Mist, Olive Sprig by PPG slash Deluxe, Breezeway by Bear Paint, and Guacamole by Glidden. While there were certain companies that veered away from green, most notably Dunn Edwards, and I suppose Valspar. This is one of the first times that I can remember where a lot of the major paint companies all decided to go in a very similar direction. As a huge fan of green, I'm pretty pleased and I hope you all are too. Because not only do I enjoy it as a paint color, but I just love it in life with plants and nature and everything that the color represents. So let's take a look at these five paint colors and start to whittle them down until I find my favorite of the bunch. My judgment is purely based on my own personal preference and should not influence your choice because I'm just a lowly North American YouTuber who spends his day talking to a camera about painting and decorating. What I'll do is I'll slowly eliminate each color one by one until we're left with the last green standing. The first green color of the year that has got to go is Breezeway. <laughs> Breezeway by Bear. No tea and definitely no shade. The color itself, it's fine. It's a pretty soothing silvery gray green color, but it's the least green of the bunch. And that's pretty much my reasoning for not choosing it. It's also notably the lightest color of the year in this list with an LRV or a light reflectance value of 66. And I can give it some brownie points for a little boost in versatility, but I just find it a little too frigid, a little too fresh for a lot of areas in the home. To me, a cooler color like this is a little more prone to feeling trendy, which is great in the short term, but then it's something you just might get sick of in the long term. Where I would happily use a color like Breezeway would be in areas like bathrooms and maybe bedrooms. Basically parts of the home that aren't in those open areas that are constantly being exposed throughout the day. The next green to get the chop is a color that really excited me when it was first announced, but as the other colors came out after it, I was less and less enthused. We have Evergreen Fog by Sherwin-Williams. Yes, I know some of you are very disappointed. On the flip side, this is the darkest green color of the year in this video. I do appreciate its slightly moody aesthetic, as it seems to be more of a shade of green that contains quite a bit of gray or even black colorant in it. And I do get that it's dark grayish green aesthetic will allow it to sit alongside other gray paint colors. But I just think it would have been more exciting if the green was a little more prevalent in this color with this amount of depth. It's also just a bit darker, which means it's great if you want it to really stand out, which I guess is a good thing if it's color of the year. Maybe you do want it to be like out in the open. You kind of want it to be noticeable, but it's dark enough that I wouldn't really see myself using it in a hallway or throughout a main living area. It's more of a seasoning color that I would plant in specific areas rather than covering the whole floor in it. That's not a knock on the color, but it just speaks to a potential drawback of it not being quite as versatile as some of the other greens on this list. Speaking of versatile, this next color ain't that either. So I do feel like a bit of a hypocrite, but I can't help myself. Glidden's guacamole is the third color to get chopped, kind of like an avocado in a guacamole. <laughs> It's also technically earning the third place on this list. Ironically, I think Evergreen Fog is actually a little more versatile than this one, but Guacamole is just such a fun color that has a wonderfully organic feel to it. Glidden went for something that was more bold and saturated with their color of the year, which I found very enjoyable to look at. 
very great for my eyeballs. What's also great about it is its ability to work with more modern types of fixtures. If you're into the whole matte black thing, <laughs> this color will look great. Or even off-white marble or granite or natural wood or wicker. Guacamole is going to complement all of that. In fact, of all the colors we're going to talk about today, this is the one that really seems to be the standout wow color. When you have a paint like this, you tend to want to keep it as the feature of the room, at least when talking about color hues specifically. It's why it seems to do so well with those more neutral accessories surrounding it, so that guacamole can give your walls that avocado goodness and just be loud and proud, but still warm and therapeutic. It just misses the top two based on its level of vibrancy. Its strength is its curse. While it could knock it out of the park in certain cases, it's definitely not gonna suit every decor. And now we're finally at our top two green colors of the year for 2022. If you've been taking notes, we've eliminated everyone except for PPG Olive Sprig and Benjamin Moore's October Mist. There's no coincidence that these are my two finalists because they both share a lot of similarities. They're both mid-tone colors. They're both fairly neutral, earthy green with sage elements, and I like them both a lot. So starting with Olive Sprig by PPG, to me, it seems like the warmer of the two greens here, as it has a little more depth being the darker color, but also just has that extra touch of yellow warmth to it. That yellow element will be further accentuated by any surrounding warm lighting, especially if you have a lot of incandescent light bulbs, like those fancy Edison bulbs at Ikea. <sighs> so cool. And it just has that added sense of overall saturation. Benjamin Moore's October Mist, on the other hand, brings a really lovely softness to it, where comparatively speaking, it's just a little more airy and perhaps closer to a gentle sage green that has some warmth in it, but not the amount that Olive Sprig brings. To pick one winner between these two, it's kind of hard, uh, I'm not gonna lie, because they both offer something slightly different, but equally useful. Olive Sprig is just gonna feel and look a little bit deeper, which is great if you're a fan of saturation and more deliberate uses of color. But on the other hand, October Mist seems to be the easier option for a lot of people. It's lighter, which means you won't have to worry as much about those darker lighting conditions in your home. And it's also a little more neutral feeling, which means it can not only pair with slightly cooler colors a bit better, but also act as a great transitional green for those of you that are used to using gray, but just wanna incorporate green moving forward. If it were me recommending one of you, or the majority of people watching, I think I would be better off steering you towards October Mist, just because of that added usability and flexibility from it. But for my personal tastes, <laughs> it would be remiss of me to ignore the amped up warmth in Olive Sprig, which is why it edges October Mist out ever so slightly. Check out our Olive Sprig color review right over here, and also find out some color pairings and trim recommendations for it. 